Hi all welcome to Box Office Studio, today I am going to recap one of the best revenge thriller movie. Ok then, let's get start. The cinema begins with two close buddies, the strict Katie and the flirtatious Sloane, eagerly looking forward to their upcoming trip out of town. They are set to work at a farm called Eco Field Organic Farms for a month, aiming to save up for a shopping spree in New York City. The following morning, Katie's constable uncle, Jason, picks them up. They will be lodging at Jason and his girlfriend's residence for a night before heading to the farm. As they settle into the new surroundings, Sloane proposes that they should use fake names during their stay in the town. Sloane decides on the name Heather while Katie picks the name Ripley. The next day, Uncle Jason drops the duo at a station from where they will catch the bus to the farm. Being the vigilant police uncle he is, Jason advises them to have a secure code word in case of trouble. The arrangement is such that they have to include a code word at the end of each message. Put simply, Jason requests Katie to send him a new code word every day in alphabetical order. The secure words for today are Apple. After the uncle departs, the two still have to await the bus, which is expected to reach in about an hour, and they choose to wait at the cafe. They quickly grab the attention of two locals and end up sharing a table with them. The two ladies then introduce themselves with the false names they created the previous night, while the two men introduce themselves as brothers named Jed and Lucas. The brothers offer to provide them with a ride to their workplace and although Katie is initially hesitant, she gives in to Sloane's silent request. The two board the young men's blue truck. However, things do not go as planned. Jed purposely drives by the farm where Katie and Sloane are employed, which confuses the two women. Finally, they reach. The two ladies are greeted by Jed and Luca's suspicious mother, who invites them for some tea before heading to the farm. Once inside, Katie receives a message from her police uncle and using their agreed-upon secure words, informs him that she is safe. Meanwhile, the two indulge in some pie and sip on some tea, which they probably should not, but they proceed nevertheless. Their vision becomes hazy as it turns out there is a drug in their beverages. The two swiftly flee after realizing something is amiss. Sadly, Jed and Lucas manage to render them unconscious and carry them back indoors. The next day, Katie and Sloane are frantic and chained up in the heart of the forests. Jed approaches them and informs them that they will now be residing there, providing them with essential necessities to survive like clothes, a bed, and a toilet. In the subsequent scene, Katie and Sloane are dressed, and Jed's superior, Boris, arrives and confiscates Katie's phone to verify if anyone is aware of their location. At this juncture, he uncovers that Katie and Sloane fabricated their names and the code word they used in the text message. Katie and Sloane are then compelled to disclose that the word Apple is a safety term. Once things are back on course, Katie and Sloane prepare to shower with makeshift facilities, just as the town sheriff arrives with his gun drawn. It comes to light that the sheriff is a despicable person who tolerates human trafficking and has arrived to assault one of the women. After the vile sheriff has his way, Sloane visits a shaken Katie to comfort her. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, Uncle Jason is becoming anxious because the recent message he got from Katie contains the same secure word she used the day before. Deep within the woods, Jed and Lucas welcome another guest, henceforth referred to as Scruffy Guy. He selects Sloane and escorts her into the caravan. Not surprisingly, Scruffy Guy exhibits some psychotic tendencies. On the other hand, the cop uncle finally places a call to Sloane and Katie's workplace and discovers they did not report for duty the previous day. Convinced that they are in jeopardy, he hurries to search for them. In the meantime, Sloane and Katie's day is on the verge of worsening because the subsequent guest to arrive is even more suspicious than before. Jed and Lucas hasten to shield their heads as the new guest approaches. Pig Mask Dude selects Sloane and leads her into the caravan. Following his departure, it is now Katie's turn to console a shaken Sloan. The extent of what Pig Mask Dude did to her remains unknown, as Sloan appears even more distressed than earlier. In the subsequent scene, Uncle Jason arrives at the sheriff's office and confronts the town's perverse sheriff we encountered earlier. Here we discover that the uncle is not only a cop but in fact an FBI agent. He shares his concerns and firmly believes that his niece is abducted. 
To add further intrigue to the storyline, for an unknown reason, the FBI uncle chooses to inform the sheriff about his apprehensions that Katie is in distress since she did not utilize a new code term in her recent text message. Meanwhile, in the woods, evidently, the sheriff has alerted the abductors about Katie's uncle being an FBI agent and Katie deceiving them about the secure word. Wishing to avoid FBI interference in their human trafficking operations, the boss Boris instructs Jeff to eliminate both women and dispose of their bodies. Unbeknownst to them, Katie is overhearing their discussion. Meanwhile, the FBI uncle opts to revisit the cafe where he had last dropped off Katie and Sloan. He then inquires with the barista about any information he may have. Fortunately, the barista vividly recalls the type of truck Katie and Sloan departed in. The following day, Katie informs Sloan that the abductors are plotting their demise just before they, along with Scruffy Guy, arrive. They leave Scruffy Guy to keep watch over the women. Katie seizes this chance to enchant him and once she is near enough, she tears his throat with her bare teeth. The two women then manage to free themselves from their restraints. Soon after, the sheriff appears at the location, presumably to carry out their murder. However, as he steps out of his vehicle, Katie and Sloan have pilfered his car. The duo drives back to town and head to the hardware store to arm themselves. The situation is about to escalate significantly. They then inquire with the cashier about Boris, the individual with the blue truck, and the cashier knows his residence. On the opposite side of town, Uncle Jason continues his investigation by visiting the town's car insurance building today. He invents a tale about accidentally colliding with a blue truck and inquires about its owner. The boss Boris barely makes it home. Unbeknownst to him, Katie and Sloan have ambushed him, hurling a series of nail-studded tennis balls that severely wound him. With the situation reversed, Boris pleads for his life and goes to the extent of offering his wealth in exchange for sparing his life. At that moment, Uncle Jason arrives outside Boris's residence. Indoors, Katie and Sloan commence interrogating him about the man donning the pig mask. When Boris declines to disclose the information, Katie and Sloan grab a makeshift spear they crafted and thrust it into him, resulting in his demise. Upon Uncle Jason's eventual entry into the house, it appears that Katie and Sloan have departed, leaving him to confront the sight of Boris in a critical state. Jason then catches the sound of car engines and rushes outside. Katie and Sloan drive away while Uncle Jason hurries the ailing Boris to the hospital. In the subsequent scene, the sheriff informs Uncle Jason that Boris did not survive. Growing increasingly anxious, Uncle Jason attempts to contact Katie's phone when, suddenly, realizing his disguise has been uncovered, the sheriff draws his gun. Katie and Sloan halt in front of a church, revealing that the pig mask individual is, in reality, the town's priest. Sloan enters the church and encounters her rapist. With Katie's assistance, the two friends overpower the villain. Katie and Sloan depart, appearing content and carefree. However, upon stopping and exiting the vehicle, they discover that Pig Mask Dude, alias the Priest, has been restrained behind the truck all along. As a final act, they douse him with gasoline and ignite him before driving away. While the two women seem to be flourishing, Uncle Jason finds himself under the sheriff's captivity. To make matters worse, it seems the sheriff has apprehended two new young women. Fortunately, Katie and Sloan come to their aid, subduing the sheriff and subjecting him to a game of Russian roulette. It becomes evident that the two women are somewhat unhinged, albeit perhaps understandably so. The sheriff begins apologizing, just as Katie concludes him with a fatal blow to the head. Subsequently, Katie and Sloan liberate the women, advising them to release Uncle Jason. Jason queries the women about the sheriff's demise, receiving no response due to their gratitude for Katie and Sloan rescuing them. Next, Katie and Sloan visit Jed and Lucas's mother's residence, opting to drug her in the same manner they were drugged days ago. They bind her and transport her to the basement where Jed is bound and silenced. They proceed to bludgeon him with baseball bats while the mother is compelled to witness the scene. Moving forward, they confront Lucas, secured to a chair. Instead of fatally assaulting him, they untie him, hand him a bat, and warn him to chastise his own mother. When Lucas expresses reluctance, they shoot him dead. Afterwards, they arrange his body to suggest suicide. 
Their plan is to pin all the homicides on him. In a desperate plea, the mother offers them money in exchange for her life, but Katie opts for brutal retribution using a lawnmower to end her life. In the ensuing scene, Uncle Jason arrives at Katie's residence to collect her and Sloan. In the course of time that has passed, Katie and Sloan are escorted to the airport, eagerly embarking on their journey to New York City, marking the conclusion of the movie. If you've enjoyed the movie and want to stay updated on more captivating recaps, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and thank you for being a part of our movie recap community.